Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create with this month and find out how you can go see what she has created. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back and so glad that you're here again. Just about each month, my friend Danny and I like to get together for our Four on Friday collaboration. What we do is we each choose one product, tool, technique, etc., and create four new projects with that. Now today I'm going to be using a stamp set, and I'll tell you about that here in just a little bit. And then once you're done with my video, go find out what Danny used to create her four projects this month. It will be linked at the very top of that description box below. Now if you enjoy this series and want to watch more videos, I do have my 4 on Friday playlist linked in the description box. For my projects today, I'm going to be using the brand new Layered Wildflower Scene Stamp Set. This is from Spellbinders Into the Wilderness Collection. I will have all of their new products and this stamp set specifically linked in the description box below if you want to go check it out. For now, let's go ahead and get started on the process. As I add more tools and products, I will let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, please leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For card number one, I started with a piece of white cardstock that was four and a half inches wide by three and a half inches tall. I'm going to be making a border with the wildflowers at the bottom of this. I try to start my cardstock in the middle of the misty, so I'll have a little bit of room to the left and right of the stamp to move my cardstock. So I kind of lined that up on the six so I always know if it comes off this first time that I need to line it up with the six on my ruler. And it did because the stamp is new and sticky so I just placed that back on the six with the ruler and then I inked it up with the green ink. Now because this is a new stamp and I wanted everything to be nice and solid I did ink everything up and stamp it twice. For the second bit of stamping, I moved my piece of cardstock to the right and I just tried to line it up visually with the stamp. Now I also wanted to make sure that I had a good spot on the ruler to keep it aligned with, so I ended up going to the four and three quarter inch mark and then once again I just ink up part of the stamp that's going to go on the cardstock stamp it twice and then I did the same thing with the placement except this time I moved my cardstock all the way to the right and just had that little bit to stamp on the left of my cardstock piece. To stamp the flowery part of the image, it's pretty much the same thing. I set it up again at the six inch mark and then I aligned the flower heads as best as I could with the stems. Now this stamp set is meant to look a little kind of watercolory, so it doesn't have to be lined up perfect. I just did my best and I actually did line it up mostly off screen because I had to put my head right over the top of that. Once I had the larger floral ready to go, I placed the smaller one. And then for this, I'm going to be doing all of the flowers in the pink ink. So again, I ink it up, stamp it twice, and I move it the same increments as I did with the original stamped image. Once all of the stamping was done, off camera I cut a piece of pink cardstock that was 5 inches wide by 3 and 3 quarters inches tall and I ran that through an embossing folder just for a little added texture. 
I did want my stamped image to bleed off the bottom, so since there was just a little white border, I brought in my Fiskars photo trimmer and I cut a sixteenth of an inch off the bottom of both the stamped and the embossed piece. Then for the main image, I purposely made this four and a half inches wide because I wanted to cut it down to three pieces that are one and a half inches wide. It's going to be kind of like if you have like a trio of canvases on a wall that are separated. Once I had those three pieces cut down, I put a strip of foam tape on the back of each for a little added dimension. And to get these onto the pink cardstock, I will be adhering the outer images first. So I put the one on the left with an even border on the outside edges, and then I take the one on the right doing the same with an even border on the outside. Now when I go to place the middle, I can just center it between the two outside. I adhered this decorated piece to the front center of a white card base and then off camera for my sentiment I ended up stamping it on the inside with the same green ink that I used for the stems. And here's a final look at that card. For card number two, I'm going to be creating a mini slim line. This white piece of cardstock and the card base both measure six and a half by three and a half. I got out a rainbow of Gina K Designs ink cubes as well as a gray for my stems. I will list all of the ink colors in the description box below. Once again, I'm going to be using my Misty so that I can set each stamp piece up once and then just move my cardstock to the left and right. For this one, I started on the seven and a quarter inch mark and I placed my stem piece centered as best as I could in that area. Now, once again, I am using a gray for the stems this time and I ink it up and stamp it twice. Just like with that first card, when each section is stamped, I move it on my Misty and then just repeat the steps. Now since I did already show you this, I will skip ahead here just a little bit. For the flowers on this card, I want them to be kind of in a rainbow order from left to right. Since I did start in the middle of the card with my stamping, I'm going to start toward the middle of the rainbow. I started with the orange ink cube and I went about halfway into the flowers with that. Now the yellow, green, and blue, I did go ahead and put a full swatch or the full width of the ink cube on that, trying to overlap them just a little bit so you get a little blending. And then finally I added just a touch of purple at the end of this first one. I used my pressure tool to get nice even coverage and then I re-inked the stamp with those same colors. After those first colors were down, I moved the cardstock on my Misty and started back with my rainbow. I did a little purple and then because I had reached the end of the colors I had, I used the red and a little bit of orange. Once the right end was done, I shifted my cardstock on the Misty again so I could do the left half. So I started with a little bit of purple and went to red for this one. And here's a close up look at the finished stamped piece. I wanted to add a mat to this piece so I brought in my trimmer and I cut a quarter inch off all sides so the stamped piece was now 6 inches wide by 3 inches tall. Then I brought in a piece of gray cardstock the same color as the stems and I cut this down to 6 and a quarter by 3 and a quarter. For the sentiment on this one, I decided I wanted to put it on some vellum so that the flowers behind it could still kind of shine through. So I cut a scrap of vellum that was one inch tall and it's about eight and a half inches wide. I went ahead and placed the stamp piece in my Misty so I could get a good idea of where I wanted my sentiment to go on that piece of vellum. For the ink, I used Jet Black Stays On. Since the vellum is not porous, this will ensure that it stamps and sticks. 
I adhered my sentiment to the stamped piece by wrapping the ends around to the back. This way you don't see any adhesive from the front. Then this piece got matted with the gray cardstock and placed onto the white card base that I cut and folded earlier. To finish this card off and add a little bling, I got out some rainbow gems that I had in my stash and I placed these on the vellum strip. I did two to the right since there was less vellum on that side and then the four to the left. I just like how this tied in the color of the flowers. And here's a look at the finished card. Card number three is going to be a one layer card with some masking and ink blending. I did go ahead and temporarily tack it closed so I could do the ink blending nicely. And to mask my lines, I just got out some sticky notes from the Dollar Tree. I brought in the stems of my flowers to kind of get an idea of how wide and where I wanted my masked strip to be. Once I had that in place, I used the sticky notes to make a masked off area. I did some super easy basic ink blending for this. I went from red to orange to yellow and once I thought each color was dark enough I would switch to the next and then bring back in that previous brush to kind of blend the two colors together. Now my favorite part of ink blending is always when I am done and I get to peel back the mask or the stencil. For the image and sentiment on this card, I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black for both of my stamps. This is just going to kind of look like a wildflower silhouette here on that strip. Now I did decide after I stamped the wildflower stems that I just kind of liked it how it was. So I did not use the flower tops for this. I did, however, use this sentiment from the set and I just kind of put that in the top left of that ink blended area. I brought in those same rainbow gems and I added two red, two orange, and one yellow just scattered from the top left to the bottom right. And here's a close up look at that finished card. And now for the fourth and final card. I originally was going to use this pattern paper in the background and I chose my three inks using the colors in that. The card base was going to be this top fold yellow and then I had a piece of green asparagus for some matting. Now for the die cutting in this, I'm going to be using the diamond floral frame glimmer hot foil, but instead of doing the glimmer foil pieces, I'll be using those diamond frames. For the stamping on this one, I will just be doing one single image so I don't have to worry about placing it so I can move my cardstock. My stems got inked up in the green asparagus and after I had stamped those up and inked them twice, I placed the flower heads onto the piece of cardstock. Now this time, instead of using a single color ink for the flowers, I inked some up in blue and some up in orange. Once that was all stamped, I used the smaller of the two diamonds and placed that on my stamped image so that I would get the flowers bleeding off the edge, but that I would also have some of the orange flowers. I held that in place with some removable tape while I ran it through the die cutter, and I also used that larger diamond to cut a piece from the green cardstock. This was the time where I realized that that was not going to work. I did not like all the floral, but I did like that yellow. So off camera, I cut that down to four by five and a quarter, and I ran it through a herringbone embossing folder. I adhered that yellow piece to the front of my top fold card base, and then I matted my stamped image with the green diamond mat. Now for a little bit of dimension here, once again I brought in my foam tape, 
added a couple strips to the back of the diamond and then I centered this onto the card front. For my bling, I decided I wanted to bring out more of the orange in the stamped image, so I added three glue dots around the outside of my diamond and put an orange sequin on each of those. Now while I did like these orange sequins, I didn't really like the placement and I thought something was missing. So off screen, I stamped the For My Friend in orange and I punched it out with a circle. I also moved one of the sequins so the sentiment could go on the top left of that diamond. And here's a finished look at the final card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made all four of these cards using the new layered wildflower scene from Spellbinders. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go watch Danny's video. Once again, it is linked at the top of the description box below, and I will have it at the end of this video as an end card. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.